Welcome back, people, to Tape Don't Lie. Tim Doyle, Cam Smith, breaking down these prospects for the 2020 NBA Draft. And Tim, we're staying in the Pac-12, and we're going to stay with these fours, these long, athletic guys. And a guy that made a huge impact for Colorado was Tyler Bay. He's the old man with, with these highlights. He's 22 years old. He was a junior before he left Colorado. But this is a guy that had a glow up from his sophomore year to his junior year. His sophomore year, he was Pac-12 most improved. And his junior year, defensive player of the year and made it to second team all Pac-12. Tyler Bay has improved and is going to be a nice role player in the NBA. Yeah, late to the party. Maybe didn't get the love that a guy like Jaden McDaniels got in high school, but he became an immediate impact player. And I love the fact that he showed that he worked on his game. He's expanded his game defensively. That's his strength. Offensively, a work in progress. But this guy can jump. I think he can jump in the hoop. He's that athletic. Tim, since we're talking about the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year in Tyler Bay, we got to start our clips off with defense and how a force he was on that end of the floor throughout conference play. And this is a great example of seeing ball, you, man, and Bay gets the block. Yeah, you know, when you talk about basketball IQ, I feel like everyone just jumps immediately to the offensive end. Guys that make the right play, guys that make the right pass can see things. When I break down Bay's film, he has a basketball IQ that's off the charts from a defensive standpoint recognizing rotations, picking up for his teammates, kind of watching a play develop. Here we go, pick and roll, and now his teammates out of position. Look who's there to pick him up. And not only pick him up, look at how fast the movement is. And then the challenge at the rim, this is flat out sick. Yeah, it is. He has two feet outside the lane. But then look at that lateral movement just to shuffle over and get that block on a guy that's going up with two hands. It takes a lot of courage, a lot of toughness to be able to challenge a guy like that. But when you're Tyler Bay and you have that wingspan that he has, it's not anything that he can't do. And the wingspan is rumored to be seven foot one. And on that block right there, but especially on this block here, look at him contest. I don't think it's rumors anymore. I think that it's true that his wingspan is at least seven foot one. Yeah, and I've played against guys that were really long from a wingspan standpoint. I remember playing against Greg Oden when I was at Northwestern and they were in a zone. He was in the middle and I turned around and shot an elbow jumper and he went up and I went up and I just went, I don't know where the ball is because he was so <laughs> extended uh, north and south. I couldn't see the hoop and Bay kind of creates those same problems for opponents. And he's not traditionally a three and D guy because well, the three, Let's just say as a work in progress when we dive into that. But as far as defensively, uh, this is where he's going to make his bones. Now, if he can step out there and make a shot, uh, that's going to change his game completely as far as making an NBA roster and being a high-impact player. But when I see him, Cam, is it fair to make a comparison? I see the Matrix, Sean Marion, a lot of athleticism, a lot of bounce in his game. Oh, yeah, it's 100% fair, Tim. And this allowed him to really get on the radars of a lot of NBA GMs because he's able to get in a stance. Yes, he's beat off the dribble, but he's able to recover and gets the block without fouling. Like how many times we see guys when they're beat, they try to hustle up and make up for it, and they're swinging wildly. Bay is under control, gets the block with his left hand, which allows him to avoid the contact and stop the player from scoring. It's some special stuff from the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, he has that serenity on the defensive end, making plays, helping out teammates, averaged almost 10 rebounds a game for the second straight year. When you talk about defense, talk about Tyler Bay. Now, Tim, we got a small taste of Tyler Bay's athleticism on the defensive end, but let's get the full bite on the offensive end with his athleticism. And you mentioned Sean Marion, that that's the comparison for Tyler Bay. And I 100% agree with you. But when you see things like this, where he gets creative in the air, that lets you know that he, one, he's springy off the court, off the floor, but also he has a little showmanship about him. He does a little dip down with the basketball and dunks it with two. Yeah, that is just ferocious. And yeah, he has that ability to kind of improvise in the air. And can't you just see him at the next level getting involved in pick and rolls, diving into the rim, making plays on the alley-oop just like that one? I mean, I love the fact that even though he's not big, 
six foot seven, 215 pounds. He's not scared of contact, right? We saw him challenge a guy to try to block a shot. And then here he just puts it on his opponent. Yeah. And it's the same kid that tried to dunk on him with two hands. So he dunks on him and says, no, this is how you do it, right? And the NBA, we see so much of lineups that are small ball lineups, right? So you can throw Tyler Bay into those small ball lineups and he can guard guards, fours, whoever it is, and still be sound on both ends of the floor where he can create some kind of matchup problem, but also get stops on the defensive end. But since talking offense, you see him glide up the court. It's like a gazelle running up the court, so smooth, so flowing, and that early push allows him to get in great position for this tip in. So it goes into the athleticism, what we're discussing, but also his timing around the rim is special. Yeah, and he just has a tremendous motor, right? He never gives up on a play, offensive end, defensive end. And this is what he's going to need to do. He's going to have to be kind of that hustle guy, that blue-collar guy, because, yes, he made 13 threes last year, but this is a guy his freshman year that made zero threes and has completely relied on just being more athletic more bouncy than everybody. He had 68 points in a high school game, Cam. He can't shoot. So what were all those points? Probably layups and dunks and just running the floor. Uh, I, I love the fact that he competes every single play, both ends of the floor. Whether the evolution of his offensive game takes place, primarily going out there and making open shots, that will really mean you play in the NBA 10, 12 years or – you know, you're kind of hovering in the G League, maybe playing overseas. You're still making a good living, but I think ultimately it's not going to be this. We know he can do this, and that is sweet. But can he go out there and make shots at a consistent level? That's going to be what affects his paycheck the most. Tim, let's dive into his offensive game and look at things that, one, he'll need to work on, but also things that allow him to be successful at the college level. And hopefully he hopes that that translates to the NBA and this first clip here is all heart and passion, something that we touched on with Tyler Bay. Gets the tip out to retain possession, and he wor outworks three UCLA players to get this two points. Yeah, this gets back to his motor and, and never giving up on a play. Uh, he has a little bit of an offensive package as far as, like, those Sean Marion-like flippers and those finishes. Uh, Sean was so creative as far as once he got in the lane to be able to finish in a variety of ways. Uh, Bay has that in his bag. So you got a great motor, you're super athletic, you could score in that paint area. Well, it's really going to come down to, you know, can you step out and make the deep shot? He has enough kind of in his bag to create off the bounce. It's not great. It's not going to be his primary thing, but he has enough to keep the defense honest. Uh, this is a guy who I think has got a crazy upside, but I really feel like going to the right team, the right organization – putting him in spots to really show his skill set, that could ultimately decide his fate. Yeah, and he also has to hit up Sean Marion. Like, I hope he's following Sean Marion on Instagram and make that connection so he can get some work in with the NBA champion because this game just oozed so much of Sean Marion and so many shades of that. But this is a situation where he catches it kind of mid-post and just goes and outworks this UCLA defender and gets right to the rim to go finish. Like, if this is not Sean Marion, then I don't know who else can compare to Sean Marion that we've seen on the college level because you see him here. There's the jab, a little shimmy fake, and he just explodes to the baseline and finishes on the other side of the rim. So that's a little bit more of that basketball IQ that we talked about that he has on the defensive end. Now we see it translate to the offensive end. Right, and that really, Sean was lucky. He went to an organization where he played with Steve Nash, and Steve was throwing him lobs, and he was in the right spot. You know, I, That's going to be so hard to predict where Tyler Bay ends up, and, and that's where we get back to banging down and making shots. He made zero of six from three his freshman year. How did that evolve? Five of 22 his sophomore year, and then last year, shot over 40% from three. Didn't make a ton, only 13 of 31 but if I'm a GM, I'm looking at those numbers, and those numbers are important because that shows me he works at his game. P.J. Tucker, right. who over the last three years, 60% of his made field goals have been threes. He only shot four threes in three years at Texas, and he has completely evolved himself to where all he does now is shoot and make threes. So if Bay has that work ethic, that commitment that he's already shown at the college level, if that translates to the pro level – 
I'm looking at that as a GM, like, all right, this kid puts in the work. If he keeps putting in the work, who knows? Because if he becomes a reliable shooter, coupled with that athleticism, coupled with that defensive thing, but 68 points in a high school game. Cam, what was your <laughs> career high at Gordon Tech? Do you have any 30-point games, any 20-point games at Gordon Tech? No, I got I got I got half of what Tyler Bay had in high school. My highest was 34. So that's as that's as far as I got in the Catholic League in Chicago. So Tim, you gotta tell me what your high score was out there in New York. It was 33. So you beat me by one point, Cam Day. You get all the FaceTime on the show. You score more points than me in high school. Now, well, you don't even need me anymore. This is a two-man game, and you're going isolation. No, I need the Tim Doyle wardrobe. That's what I got to get. So when we come back on line, the next time you see us, hopefully Tim will give me some tips on how to, you know, dress it up and get my swag game going. Look at that. I mean, look at the pocket square. Even though that's, that's the equivalent of a, of a, of a clip-on tie, but I, I'll give you some credit for having the pocket square, though. <laughs> for Tim Doyle, I'm Cam Smith. Thanks for rocking with us on Tape Don't Lie.